Hey folks, quick disclaimer about Greasy Says, my new show about being a game developer for 15 years who's brown. Okay, Greasy Says contains explicit language, adult situations, and viewer discretion is strongly advised. Right? Greasy Says is supposed to be a comedic take on what it's like to be in the gaming industry from my perspective, but I'm not out here trying to make people feel uncomfortable just for the sake of it. So, to sum it up, I have a potty mouth. Don't let your kids listen to this shit. And kings and queens above 18 only. Let's try that. All right. Lay is. Haha, <laughs> let's get this party started. The professional Greasy says. Do you feel good? Well, I feel good. Do you feel good? Well, I feel good. Do you feel good? I'm good. Do you feel good? I'm good. Do you feel? 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 Are you good? Are you good? I feel good. Do you feel? I feel good. I feel good. I'm good. I'm good. I feel 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 good. I'm good. I'm feeling great. How about you? Take a moment. Bounce to the beat with me. I feel good. We feel good. You feel good. I feel good. You feel good. I feel good. You feel good. Take a time. Just take some time to feel good, y'all. That's what it's all about on Greasy Says. Welcome to Greasy Says, the podcast by me. My name is Greasy, a.k.a. MQ. And I'm here on Greasy Says, being a brown game developer for damn near 16 years. Lots of experience, been bouncing around, doing all kinds of stuff in the industry, in the gaming industry. And I want to tell you all what it feels like to be brown in the gaming industry. Share my perspectives and, you know, really show everybody out there in in the greasy sphere that we're all the same. We're all, we're not the same, but we are all the same. We're not one, but we are all one. And the closer we can get to realizing that fact, man... Shit would be so good. You feel good. I'd feel good. You'd feel good. I'd feel good. We'd feel good. It'd be great. It'd be great. What's been going on? How y'all doing? What's going on in the news? Hey, uh, uh, happy Women's History Month. Right? Ladies, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for helping me personally on my journey. Uh, and big up to all the women out there. I, I actually had a, a thought. I, I just wrote it down. I don't know what I meant by it. But I'm, I said, Cassie Sharp, ladies, support your peoples. Big future. Okay, I wrote this down sometime. I don't know when I wrote this down. But I looked it up and apparently Cassie Sharp is a snowboarder from Canada. And I must have watched like some half pipe competition or some fucking... Uh, downhill snowboarding competition and thought Cassie Sharp was the shit. I probably heard some backstory on her and how she's a badass. And I was just like, all right, I got to tell people about Cassie Sharp. And perfect. It's Ladies History Month. So ladies, support your peoples. That's the most important thing. I've heard people like, uh, what's the name? Bill Burr. I've heard Bill Burr say that the WNBA doesn't make, you know, as, as big of a splash as the NBA because ladies aren't showing up to support the WNBA so he watches it to support it and I, that got me thinking like man uh you know I've heard even from like my moms and shit how sometimes ladies can tear each other down it's just a reality it happens to dudes it happens to brown folks happen to black folks happen to white folks happen to everybody where you tear down your own people but yo it's a perfect opportunity in in ladies history month women's history month to support your peoples and to show your love and big up people in your in in your section, you dig? Like I know, like I, I'm not a I'm not a woman. How the fuck would I know? Moving on. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. You feel good. I feel good. You feel good. Here's my hot take this week. Okay, I've been doing a lot of learning this week. I've been doing a lot of, of osmosis of just 
soaking up information and knowledge that I didn't have before. I have been burning my midnight oil of my brain. And it feels really good. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we all get kind of into the hamster wheel of making games and developing games. And, you know, we kind of might get comfortable with what we know and not really push ourselves to learn new things until an opportunity comes, like I have recently, to just spend a ton of time learning new shit and trying new shit. And I have been loving it. I'll tell you, by the end of the day, I'm ready to pass the fuck out on a, on, on a fucking Yogi Bo. No sponsorship here, but I'll pass out on a fucking Yogi Bo just because my brain has been so exercised to maximum uh, uh, stamina deficit that I'm ready to just pass out. It's like it's like doing Muay Thai or like doing Judo or Jiu Jitsu. It's like your body will just be like toast, but you feel fantastic, fantastically toasted, like an excellently rolled blunt. Is that a bug? What? Some kind of jumping bug. I'm, you know what? I'm just going to let him live. Him or her. I'm just going to let them live. That is some crazy jumping, though. I don't know how I feel about that. Anyway, uh, what I was saying is, you should drown your brain. That's my advice to all the, all the greasy people out there. Drown your brain because it can take it. All right? Your brain can take so much learning. And, and you can feel almost overwhelmed by learning. Like I remember back in college feeling that way sometimes. Maybe you in high school, you feel that way. Maybe you in middle school, you feel that way. Anywhere you have to be learning and it's intense, it can feel overwhelming. But let me tell you, it's one of those things... One of the few things when you feel overwhelmed, if you push through to the other side, you're going to feel so much better. I can't say that about everything. But learning is one of those things. It's a pure investment in you, which is the best kind of investment you could possibly make. So drown your, drown your brain, greasy people. I feel good. You feel good. You feel good. I feel good. I feel smart. I feel good. We feel good. You dig me? You feel me? I feel good. You feel good? You feel me? I feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I clearly feel really good. Maybe it's this beat that's got me feeling so good. You know what I mean? This beat is happy as shit. I like it. It's a vibe. Which reminds me. You can always check out my music, y'all. Go listen to my music on Spotify. Go find my shit on Bandcamp under the name MQ. That's M-C-U-E. And you could go follow me on social media if you want at the same time and hit me up and tell me what a great job I'm doing on Greasy Says. I'd really appreciate it. On uh, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook under the name Greasy Says. That's G-R-E-A-S-Y-S-A-Y-S. In case you didn't know how to spell it because the thing's right on your fucking screen right now or your fucking phone or whatever you're listening to this on you clearly have access to the correct spelling so i don't really need to do that but i did it for your service i don't know if you might be listening to this on a ham radio somehow you know what i mean you might be in, you might be an alien listen to this shit in space and, and you like i don't read english but if you spell it for me phonetically I, I my super brain can decipher that you're welcome uh j117 rs wink wink I know you're out there listening to me. Bring back Tupac. You know damn well Tupac playing Super Nintendo in the sky, man. Today's key is... I'm on the hot line. I'm reaching out. Is there anyone, anybody out there? Hey, Greasy, since you love social media so much, why don't you give us your take on it? Social media is kind of like video games during the 80s. Remember when your parents thought that video games were a huge waste of time? Remember when people would scoff at video game commercials? Or when people thought that video games were a flash in the pan? Something to be tolerated short term 
but that would eventually phase out. Remember how wrong you thought those people were? My mom had a really good friend who used to see me every weekend, spending hours upon hours in front of the TV playing shit like Final Fantasy VII or Eco, and would actively say to me, what do these games actually bring to the table? Is there any future in making games? What is playing all these games going to get you in the long term? How are these games going to improve your life? It's not like you're going to be able to make a career out of this. <laughs> Bless her little heart. She was a good lady, no doubt, but she had no concept of the power of games and the longevity of games and the ways that games would infiltrate every single aspect of human life. Kind of like social media. There is no denying the power of social media. It can be a catalyst for great change and global knowledge sharing. And it can also be a bile-filled cesspool teeming with shit-eating sharks. I've run the gamuts of emotions and opinions on social media. When I first tasted Facebook, I saw the potential and I saw the draw of getting to basically stalk your friends. That's cool. I saw the draw of finding old crushes, you know, from back in the days and diving deep into their personal pictures. I mean, we all did it. I embraced the creep factor of Facebook, as I'm sure a lot of us have. If you tell me that you never looked up an old girlfriend or boyfriend on social media after you broke up with them, I'm gonna call you a straight up fucking liar. Liar, liar, your pants on fire. But in the last, let's say, 10 years, my opinion on social media has significantly changed. I don't see it as a place of wonder. I don't see it as a bed of opportunity. I don't even see it as a fun time, to be honest. Nowadays, I see a lot of social media as literal mental poison. I despise the way that I personally process social media. Remember I said that, I, the way I personally process social media. Have you ever been scrolling through, let's say, Instagram, and you see an old friend of yours seemingly having the greatest time of their lives? Yes, we all know by now that those are just snapshots of the perfect moments, and the rest of the time that they were experiencing was not as good as that one snapshot. A lot of social media pictures are just straight-up lies. We all get that. But what about professionally? Hmm? Have you ever found yourself looking at fellow devs online or looking at their like LinkedIn articles and feeling inferior? Have you ever seen someone post their latest game release and feel a tinge of jealousy? That's not healthy behavior, y'all. And I mean, I do it, so I know. That's not how we're supposed to feel about other people's accomplishments. But somehow social media just brings out that part of us. Sure, most humans secretly despise the success of others. But the sheer concentration of stories that you consume on social media, it makes for a particularly potent brew. A brew that I really don't enjoy drinking. And that's not their fault. It's not the people on social media's fault. It's my fault for living comparatively to totally unrealistic imagery. I accept that. On the flip side, social media can give us access to some of the greatest minds and their findings. I can follow game designers or sound designers or 3D artists or composers or even executives if I have absolutely nothing better to fucking do. And I can learn so much from so many people in such a short amount of time. I can follow who the greats follow and learn from who the greats learned from. I can even reach out and ask questions to great devs with no guarantee that those questions will be answered, but having the option is an incredible thing. Not to mention the thousands of YouTube tutorials, tips and tricks, hacks for game development that are out there. I've learned more about using Unreal from YouTube than I ever have from any Unreal documentation. And the documentation is pretty damn thorough. 
even if it's nerdy as fucking damn narrow pig. Social media is both an elixir and a poison. It has the ability to inspire us and in the same breath, tear us down. And let's not even get into the motherfucking comments. As a dev for many years, I can tell you, reading the comments seldom brings you the positive feeling that you're looking for. It can feel really great when someone praises your work, but it feels almost quadruple as painful when someone tears down your work. And the truth is, your audience could give two shits about the work you've put into your games. I guess the long and short of it is, treat social media like a gun. It's a tool, but a very dangerous tool in the wrong hands, and a very dangerous tool in inexperienced hands. So when you read the comments on your latest game, or you compare yourself to the beautiful 20-something with seemingly endless happiness, and someone posts about an interview they did or an award that they won, remember that it's not as rosy as it seems. And that every thought that pops into your head as you consume this media is a potential bullet in a gun that you're holding next to your head. Bang. Bang. You know, I wasn't really sure where this episode was going, <laughs> to be honest, when I started it. It happens with a lot more episodes than you think. Um, but as I'm thinking about, all right, drowning your brain, learning, soaking up as much information as you can, always be learning, always be a student. And the draw of social media to shit that isn't real and fantasy shit, you know what I mean? Shit that is so unattainable, the people who are doing the things that you're looking at can't even attain it. You know what I mean? Uh, it got me thinking, what am I really getting at? <laughs> what am I actually talking about? And I feel like it's about investment in yourself. I feel like, like I said, it, I kind of got to it as I was going through this thing. But investing in yourself can mean so many things, and it's the most important thing. And that's something that social media generally does not give you, is an investment in self. It invests you in everyone else. If I learn about uh, how to fucking, I don't know, do server stuff for blueprints in Unreal, uh, that's investing in myself. If I go out and I buy a house or buy a piece of property and rent it to someone else, I'm investing in myself. If I go to school or I take a class to learn anything, I'm investing in myself. Even though I'm spending money on other people, I'm investing in myself. With social media, it's kind of like if you were renting, you're throwing your money away. You know what I mean? You're focusing on someone else all the time. Like someone else will take care of this problem. Uh, you, you get no gain, personal gain from that. Uh, you might go out and buy a bunch of flashy shit to fill up your house with. You spend all your money on it, but there's no... I guess you get some comfort and fun out of it, but, it, but what does it bring you in the long term? And then I'm like thinking about how I'm thinking about it right now is how this friend of my mom's was telling, was asking me the same questions, like prompt, but you know, she wasn't exactly tearing down what games were as an art form and as a technology. She was asking me, what are you fucking getting out of this? Are you investing in yourself when you play all these games? What's the long-term plan for you? So, I mean, I'm blowing my own mind with my own episode while I'm, I'm recording it. That's fucking weird. But, like, I want to talk to, to black and brown folks uh, out there who may be coming up. You know what I mean? Like if you're coming up in games and you just start making your, your loot or you just got your first gig or you got your first full-time thing or you got your promotion, all that extra money you get, right? Invest in yourself. Don't just fucking throw it away on shiny shit. And I see in that particularly the black folks and brown folks, 
because we can't we sometimes have a tendency to chase the fly shit because we fly but we chase the fly shit before we invest in ourselves and i think it's changing i see a lot more heads nowadays just kind of thinking you know it's not it, it, they're about the bag but once they get the bag it's not just about calling money on your fucking hotline you know what i mean putting that shit up next to your ear it's about all right i'm gonna buy you know this fucking land over here and this land over here and this piece of property over here. and i bought dumbo when the shit was you know five million instead of 26 million or whatever jay-z said you know what i mean invest in yourself make that money make that money make that money yeah make that money bro but yo where does it go huh where does it go yeah get that bag make that money make that money get that bag get that bag shorty but yo where does it go huh where does it go i've been re- recently watching a new show that i discovered on uh, netflix if you watch any sort of nerdy shit like sci-fi or fantasy or shit about video games or anime this show has definitely popped up in your feed you probably added it to your list to the list that you will never complete ever but uh it's called guardians of, of the uh, I almost said guardians of the galaxy which is not right it's guardians of justice It's like a superhero movie, retro style, dark, um, sort of alt telling, not your traditional telling of a, of a super, superhero story. Uh, it's decent. You know, the writing is decent. The acting is eh, occasionally good. Um, but there was a few things I wanted to talk about with this show that really grabbed me. One the way it's presented, it's um, it's the closest thing I've seen to merging a comic book and cinema together. Like, we've seen Sin City that tried to basically perfectly replicate a comic book. It doesn't work. You watch uh, The Watchmen, which a lot of people will say The Watchmen can only exist in on a page in a comic book because of the way the story is told Alan Moore shit cannot be moved to the big screen it just doesn't work I don't know why but when they try to do it it fails so it's it's been something I've been tracking now for a long time about how do you make a comic book into a film like the feeling of reading a comic book the amount of information that you can take in from a comic book is way more than you can take in from looking at a screen from looking at a uh, cinema film it's just the way it is it's the way your eye moves around the page it's the way you process that information it's also very personal it's not being um not diluted but it's not being filtered by someone else's eye someone else's creative mind it's you taking in the artist's work that is a pure connection um it comes very, very close to feeling like a comic book because it's very chaotic. It's grabbing a lot of what works in comic books like um, The Dark Knight, where you're constantly jumping back and forth between stories, uh, between threads. And it does all the things that film does well and video does well about distilling things down into their shortest, smallest, focused um, being. So like... The way we it basically inhale media online, like through video, like we watch seven second videos and we think we understand what's going on. We watch 30 second videos. We think we understand this whole concept and we're just completely, uh, we're, we're constantly drinking in all of this information. And Adi Shankar, who is the director of this series and has a ton of other work that you should check out, his production company or whatever is called Bootleg Universe. He manages to take that like um, high amount of information, high amount of backstory, large quantities of it, distill it down using media, using video into these bite sized chunks. But the way he's serving up this story, which is actually a pretty elaborate story, is in these constant bite sized chunks of 
one second you're looking at found footage with animations drawn over it. Then you're looking at a scene where two characters, real characters, real people filmed are having a conversation and they talk about a fight they had in the past. And the flashback is now half CG, half uh, frame by frame animation. Uh, And then there's another scene right afterwards where it's all told through 8-bit style, 16-bit style video game animation. So you're constantly, your mind is constantly bouncing between all of these types of delivery systems for art. So it keeps your stupid uh, monkey brain, which is always looking for the newest thing on TikTok because we can only fucking process seven seconds of all this bullshit out there at a time and our tiny, tiny attention spans. And it, it, it uses that function in our brains that is so familiar now of just consume, 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 and weaves this very complicated story over a long period of time using these bite-sized chunks of, of data, so to speak. Am I making any fucking sense at all? <coughs> I might be up my own ass. I might be up my own ass. Highly recommend that you check out. I'm not saying you need to watch the whole thing, but check it out. It reminds me of, remember Robocop? Uh, back in the 80s, if you never watched Robocop and you were a youngster living, listening to this, you never watched Robocop, not the remake, the old school shit. Go watch that shit if you're not too young because that, they have a scene in there that will fuck you up. But um, the way that that story was told where they constantly jumped in with ads, with commercials for products that didn't exist or, you know, and it kind of poked fun at itself and fun of the universe and fun of like the idea of like, this is a movie that cost millions of dollars to make about a robot cop in the future in California, uh, in Chicago. Detroit. This is the most ridiculous shit ever. I find that uh, Adi Shankar's stuff usually looks at itself and is like, this is completely ridiculous. I can't believe we're getting paid to do this. And they put that on the screen, and I really like that. I don't know about Adi Shankar's uh, The Crow makeup thing that he was doing for a while. I looked up some pictures. I don't know what that was about. A little, like, I get it. You like makeup and shit, but like the, the straight up crow lines down the face and like going out in public and doing interviews like that. I don't know, buddy. I mean, do, live your life, though. Live your life. Live your life. Live your life. I'm just saying you could save a lot of money on makeup. Uh, uh, you know, you just you can do it subtly. You can just do it under the eye. You don't need to. You know, basically go superhero, you go fucking DC with it and start painting your face like the Joker and shit, you know? It's, I'm just saying it's cute one time, but like a bunch of times, I think he cooled off though. I think he probably caught on that I wasn't like, you can walk up into, you know, Netflix's offices more than once with the fucking eye makeup, with the fucking, yeah, you know what I mean? Like after a while, people are gonna be like, all right, Addy, please, can you, can you go fucking wash your face off so we can have this fucking meeting? we're trying to fucking do business here. Can you, you mind? <coughs> Save it for Mardi Gras or some shit. Save it for Halloween. It comes every year. I mean, it's all good. You're not, miss, you're not missing anything. We get it. We get it. You're weird. I get it. Uh, the other thing I really liked about the way that Addy made uh, this series is he gives credit to a lot of the animators and the other creators that are a huge part of this production. Without them, this is this is basically a bunch of scenes of two people saying dialogue, right? All the animators, all the effects artists, uh, they really and the sound guys, they really flushed out the entire movie. Without those scenes, uh, the the the, main, the the a lot of the story would be lost. You know what I'm saying? And on, on a lot of the punch. And the excitement of this of the whole show would be lost. And that is the beauty, as in games, of diversifying your fucking team. Because Addy has one idea, but you take that to a bunch of fucking animators from Korea, and then you go over here to Venezuela and you scoop up the fucking Domingo brothers who are ridiculous with the CG shit. And you 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 touch all points of the world. You go to China, you go to fucking wherever, you know what I mean? Eastern Europe, fucking the Caribbean, wherever you want to go to find your talent, 
and you bring it all together to tell this story and it creates it just it you can feel the diversity in a piece of media when a lot of people make it because they pour their souls into it right they pour their hearts into it so you can't help but see it you know what i'm saying so like a game or a movie made by a bunch of white people in california is always going to feel like it was made by a bunch of white people in california a, a, a piece of work like Ori and the Blind Forest made remotely by a bunch of people from all over the world, that has a very unique feel that you can feel because all of those people drip their soul into that cup. You know what I mean? That is why it's so important to get more brown folks, more black folks, way more than we have, integrated into teams who make games and who make creative media because we can all feel it man why do you think we all love the fucking enter the spider verse so much we can feel that a black dude ran that fucking shit and the team i don't know for sure i have to look it up but i'm, I'm assuming the team was very diverse because once you start with diversity at the top it trickles down you, you, you fucking get me so let's fucking do this thing right let's Keep diversifying our teams and our shit will get better. And all of us will enjoy this shit way more. Promise you that. Well, time flies, doesn't it? We're almost to the end of another episode, man. Isn't that crazy? Just happens like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. Uh, got some, uh, some listener tweets and twats and uh, comments. This one's great. Love this one. It was about the last episode I did about uh, Elden Ring. Go back and check that out if you haven't listened to it yet. That one was actually kind of popular. Um, this this listener says, The new episode of Greasy Says has me, Greasy MQ, serving up not just hot Elden Ring takes, but hot, juicy, fresh off the grill and ready to burn up the roof of your mouth Elden Ring takes. And I'm here for it, as the younger folks that are cooler than I am would say. Listen, when you take in my Elden Ring takes, it got a different kind of seasoning in it. It got extra scotch bonnet pepper. It got uh, cayenne. It might have some sesame seeds, some ginger. It's not for the faint of heart when I give you my Elden Ring takes, okay? So just beware. Ethan knows that my takes now, he's tasted them, are um, as a white person might say ethnic in its flavor. So beware, just be careful. Use with caution. see what else I got one here this is from the homie this is from the homie it says yo Arthur I'm loving the latest episode of the podcast I relate to your bit about the chair tying the bedroom together so hard I talked about back in that same Elden Ring episode about like how I got this chair from my room and it ties the whole thing together go back and listen I'm not gonna explain it to you now continuing I also lolled every time you declared your hate for Elden Ring and followed it up by and followed it up by noting that you've never played it. Should I say that sentence again? Okay. I also lolled every time you declared your hate for Elden Ring and followed it up by noting that you've never played it. Thanks for keeping up with the podcast. I'm always happy when a new episode pops up in my feed. Yo. Your moves are dark. And you're great. So thank you for the comments. Keep them coming. Tell your friends about Greasy Says so that they can tell me about how they like my hot juicy takes. And I got hot juicy takes for everyone. I have plenty to go around. Okay? You're welcome. And thank you. And you're welcome. As always, we wrap up every single episode of Greasy Says with a moment to reflect, a moment to medicate and meditate. So light them up if you got them. Medicate. 
Medicate and meditate. This week, this week, this week, this week. Oh, medicate and meditate, take, 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 take. I want to talk to the inner demon, the inner hater, the one that lives inside of us all. What do you call your inner hater? I call mine Clancy. And Clancy's an asshole. Clancy comes around right when I'm on top of the world, tries to tear me down. Clancy waits until I'm in a hole and tries to dig that hole even deeper. But I got news for Clancy, man. I got some words for Clancy. Yeah. I'm so fly, I'm so witty. I'm so fly, I'm so witty. I'm so fly, I'm so witty. Clancy, you can't make me feel shitty, man. I'm so fly, I'm so cool. I'm so fly, I'm so cool. I'm so fly, I'm so cool. Clancy, you never make me feel like a fool. I'm so fly, I'm so dread. I'm so fly, I'm so dread. I'm so fly, I'm so dread. Man, I might give myself head. I don't mean it like that, though, not sexually, but I really just mean it like I would give my own brain a massage. Because it's so great and it deserves a massage. It deserves to relax. Because I drown it all the time. And I'm always learning. And my brain sticks with me. It's always burning that midnight oil. I appreciate the toil. But yo, Clancy. I'm so fly, I'm so dope. I'm so fly, I'm so smart. I'm so fly, I'm so witty. I'm so fly. Yes. We've reached the end of an episode. It's been real. It's been cool. I hope you had fun. Cause I did, cause I did, cause I did, cause I did. I feel good, you feel good. Greasy people. Yo, I appreciate you listening. I really do. Uh, I love that the numbers keep growing. I love that we're pulling in more greasy people out there. Remember, share an episode of Greasy Says with your favorite compatriot. And don't forget to check me out on social media under Greasy Says on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And check out my music on Spotify under the name MQM-CUE. Yeah, 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 yeah. But do remember, y'all, to feel good, to feel good, to feel good, to spread that good in everything you do. Greasy people, thanks for coming out. Like, subscribe, comment, give me feedback. Tell me to go fuck myself. And until next time, it's me, it's Greasy. And I'm checking out with the boogie. Latest.